Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you all on Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, by the way, uh, those of you that celebrate it. I want to talk real quick about the ATF's withdrawal of their letter yesterday on stabilizing braces. L look, I am one of these kind of guys who doesn't trust the ATF. You know, I've said before that there are some good people that probably work for the ATF. Let's make no mistake about it. Those of us on the pro-Second Amendment side, how do we view the ATF? We view them as anti-gun people, not to be trusted, always trying to play games, trying to trick law-abiding Americans instead of going after actual crime and criminals. They're always trying to throw this little trap for a law-abiding American to catch them and send them to jail rather than trying to seek out and remedy any kind of crimes that might be taking place where actual criminals are doing things wrong. That's how we view the ATF. They are not to be trusted. How do you think the other side views the ATF? The other side views the ATF as champions of their cause, as champions of the anti-gun cause. They know how we view the ATF and they look at themselves as being proponents of the ATF. So my point is, when the ATF is hiring, who applies for those jobs? Anti-gun people. I don't know anyone who's ever applied for a gun, uh, excuse me, a, a job at the ATF. And have you met people ATF? Let's be real about this, guys. I've met many people from the ATF. They're seeking a long-term commitment with a government job where they can sit on their butts and do bureaucratic bullcrap and not have any real accountability because nobody ever gets fired from the federal government. It's a cake job for a screw-up. It's a beautiful thing for them. The ATF is like that seventh grader that caught, caught stealing lunch money from a blind kid in school. He got caught doing something wrong, and he's gonna come back more bitter and angrier than ever. And that's what the ATF is gonna do. We won yesterday on 1223 with the help of 90 Republicans and only Republicans, not one single Democrat signed on to that letter from Representative Hudson that told the ATF to back off. But they got their hand slapped, the ATF did. They're not happy. You can frame this however you want that. It's the ATF playing chess. They know what they're doing. No, 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 no. The ATF did not want to withdraw that letter yesterday. They did that because they had to, and their backs were against the wall. They were kicked in the figs, and they are mad right now. They're simply going to wait it out. The January, I think January 6th is the, uh, the Senate race down in Georgia. They're hoping that they gain the Senate, the ATF is. So then if there's an inauguration on January 20th of Joe Biden, now they've got the presidency, which that's who they work for, supposedly. The ATF is waiting. Now, I know that this is technically Trump's ATF, but let's be real about this. These people in the ATF, Trump did not hire the people in the ATF. This Regina chick, that's the one that's the most bitter out of all of them, that already is, is, is caught on camera saying that they, they're, they've already talked to the Biden administration about their, what their, their top things are that they want to go after, which they mentioned, polymer 80s and uh, stabilizing braces. She is a holdover from everybody. She, she might have been appointed by Trump, but she was already there. All these people were already here. This is not like a Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, or a full cabinet that the new president appoints all new people. No, guys. These are career people. These people who sign up for these jobs and get these jobs with the ATF are there for life. I think what we can expect to see by them or from them is a lot more bitterness. I think with the stabilizing brace issue, what you're probably going to see is they may actually do some defining of characteristics, some actual defining using measurements and whatnot. And it's probably gonna be a lot of stuff that we don't like, but it's gonna be measurable things that we at least will know what the rules are to a certain degree. Again, they are still the ATF. They're not gonna lose their sense of ambiguity. That's just the way they are. That's the nature of how they conduct their business. The ATF has never been known for going after law breakers. They go after law-abiding people and try to make them into criminals. They don't go after criminals. That's the big difference between the ATF and other actual law enforcement agencies. It's like they're trying to bait you, the ATF is, into breaking the law so that they can then get you in trouble. That's the nature of how they've always conducted themselves. My point is, guys, and I'm trying to make this as short as I can, is that I think we have to hold our ground. I think we're at a point where we had a small victory. We do not retreat and celebrate. We're, we get happy for the small victory that we had, but simply hold our ground of where we are because they're in retreat mode right now. And one thing I'm going to say about Republicans, I don't trust either party. 
You've got the likes of Dan Crenshaw and Marco Rubio, who both have gone on record in support of red flag gun laws. And I have called them out online both times, or both guys. In fact, Dan Crenshaw has uh, blocked me from Twitter and I believe Instagram also from even commenting on any of his posts anymore because he's so angry that I've called him out so many times on his support of red flag gun laws. I don't support, I don't, I don't think either party uh, uh, wants what's best for me. Uh, a true conservative constitutionalist. I, I don't see anybody fighting for my rights. But I will tell you this, those 90 reps that spoke up for the American people and sent this letter to the ATF, all 90 were Republicans. Now, the problem I have with Republicans is that they never play from the offensive. When they have the power, the support that they need to get things done, they never do anything. It's only whenever their backs are against the wall and when they lose power and don't have any power that they finally step forward. There's a big difference between being pro-Second Amendment and being anti-anti-gun. And that's where I see most Republicans. They're not anti-gun. They're against the anti-gun people, but they're certainly not pro-Second Amendment people, not like you and I are. So it's nice to see at least 90 Republicans, I'm very disappointed. You talk about a partisan issue. You don't think that the Democrats are going to be going buck wild whenever Joe Biden gets in there? Not one Democrat. Now, you saw the wording in this letter. This wording in this letter was saying that these representatives had a problem with the ATF trying to criminalize law-abiding American people, and you still couldn't get one Democrat to stand up for the American people, law-abiding American people, this should not be a partisan issue, but I, it is, because the Democrats sat this one out. Don't tell me the Democrats didn't have an opportunity. Anytime you want to do something, you whip up as many of those representatives as you possibly can from any party you can. That means that not one single Democrat out of 200 and something Democrats would see the need, the value in at least stepping forward. Even the Joe Manchins out there, nobody from the Democratic side stepped forward and said, we don't think this is right, what you're trying to do to law-abiding Americans. They showed me where they're going. They showed me that in 2021, the bill that they floated in 2020, H.R. 5717, that involved every single possible anti-gun law that you could ever throw into one bill, that was simply a, a litmus test for them. That was their way of floating something out there, see what would stick, see what kind of reaction they would have, to know what they could actually try to push through once they get any kind of sense of real power. And with Biden in there, they're going to be emboldened to do that. Look for more of these things out of 5717 that are going to be sent forward by these very Democrats that sat this one out whenever they could have taken at least a little bit taken up for us law-abiding American gun owners. Again, they sat it out. Guys, that's not right. Look for a bumpy 2021. I feel like at this point, we mobilized a little bit, and what a beautiful thing it was. I saw people from all over. Actually, I saw the media lit up like crazy um, about the stabilizing brace issues and the stance that the ATF was taking as far as throwing out all these ambiguous rules and factors that they were trying to propose. It was a beautiful thing. And I'm happy to say that... Um, I, I expect more going forward um, because this was proof and an indicator to me that we can unite as one and actually make a difference. It wasn't just the letters to um, uh, the ATF, the 40-something close to 50,000 letters to the ATF. It wasn't just that. The congressman that did all of this, the 90 rep uh, Republican congressmen that sent this letter to the ATF, did it on the day before Christmas Eve. You can best believe they did not want to do any work on the day before Christmas Eve because these guys take more time off than Santa Claus does during the year. Yet they still came together two days before Christmas Eve and did this. You know what that means? It means their constituents were writing their tales about this. It wasn't just the letters to, con to uh, the ATF. It was letters and phone calls to Congress that got this done. Because those 90 guys would have been asleep on a couch in front of their fireplace at home if you guys had beat them up about this issue and made them take notice. So those phone calls and emails that everybody acts like never matters, it doesn't make any difference, it mattered this time.